pussy. What do you want me to do, draw you a picture? Spell it out? Don't ever ask me. As long as you live, don't ever ask me more. Westerns that make you sad. When we think of westerns, we think of shootouts, action, good and bad guys, duking it out with awesome wild backdrops, often being taken through the gamut of feelings, every emotion under the sun. Today we will take a look at some westerns that made us feel sad. One of the often overlooked emotions that can make westerns really hit home, often unexpected, hitting you in the gut. Let me know what you think in the comments. A comparison may be made with country music often referred to as lion, crying and dying themed. If you enjoy this video, hit the notification button to get my new videos. If you want to check out my many other videos, head over to my channel and check out my Facebook page. The links are in the description. Please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel as well. I appreciate it. Let's get into it. Unforgiven, 1992. Arguably Eastwood's best western and most impactful. A story about bounty hunters, revenge and corruption. It also feels more realistic and downbeat than most westerns. A reflection on the western genre and made Eastwood a legend. A violent, realistic tale at times, though not a totally despair-ridden movie. It does give us the feeling that it won't be a story that ends with the characters riding off into the sunset holding hands. Ride the High Country, 1962, a Sam Packing Power masterpiece, able to utilize two great icons of the genre at the end of their careers. One does get the feeling of something coming to an end. Randolph Scott retired after this movie, stating that he could not improve this performance. McRae likewise called it quits, but came back for a couple more westerns before completely retiring. The ending does leave us with a truly empathetic feeling of any of us in our sunset years. Don't worry about anything. I'll take care of it. Just like you would have. Hell, I know that. I always did. You just forgot it for a while, that's all. So long, partner. The Assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, 2007. The first half or so of the movie builds up to the betrayal and murder found in the title. In the film's final act explores the consequences depicting how Ford's action affected the remainder of his life. It's not an upbeat western, but it is engaging and watchable, featuring some memorable performances, music and visuals. Brad Pitt's favourite of his own movies. The Searchers, 1956, a true epic western, controversial for its time, but certainly one of John Wayne's best three westerns. From the start, it is an emotional roller coaster, keeping you hopeful one minute, then in despair the next. There were many moments where sadness was utilised, making the ending all the more impactful. Simply a home run for John Ford and John Wayne. Pity he had to wait until True Grit for his Oscar. Raptor in my coat. 
buried her with my own hands. Thought it best to keep it from you. Oh. Did they? What was she? What do you want me to do? Draw you a picture? Spell it out? Don't ever ask me. Long as you live, don't ever ask me more. Jeremiah Johnson, 1972. A lonely story of a man who stepped out of civilization into the unknown, facing many challenges. Redford demonstrated he could carry a western on his own shoulders. Definitely not an upbeat movie, but at the same time hopeful and entertaining. A real demonstration and representation of what the men of the Wild West had to endure. Heaven's Gate, 1980, an epic western notorious for costing way too much and recovering only a little of it back. A troubled production earning so much bad press that many critics reviewed it negatively on release. No doubt an impressive film and not as bad as its reputation suggests. The story follows several characters all involved in a brutal conflict between rich cattle barons and the immigrant farmers they employ. A movie about class that's violent and tragic. It's unapologetically brutal and downbeat at times, with a lasting impression that those initial poor reviewers were unfair. Shane, 1953. A favourite of many, a western that set a standard that many have tried to mimic, even today. A gritty, tense and hypnotic western. A true representation of what life would have been like at the time. Life was cheap in the old west. The law was usually rare and hard to find, leaving those to fend for themselves. That included defending themselves. Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, 1973. Sam Peckinpah made this western to deconstruct some of the West's usual tropes. Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. The plot focuses on the former title character, hunting down the latter, despite the two used to think of themselves as friends. A sad take on the western genre, feeling like a sour farewell to its earlier simpler days. It also benefits from its music by Bob Dylan including the song Knockin' on Heaven's Door. Dylan also appears in the movie in a supporting role. Unfortunately, Dylan did not rock the world as an actor. The Proposition, 2005. One of the best Australian movies so far. 
a brutal and tough western about crime, revenge and family. It focuses on a man blackmailed into finding and killing his older brother that's just been convicted of a brutal criminal act. His younger brother will be executed if said older brother isn't killed. It's hard to see how the proposition could end up well for anyone. The brutal events played out with an amount of sad realism and tragedy. Its brutality and lack of positive emotion is not for everyone. Well made and depicts Australian cinema at its most impressive. <sighs> but you're not my brother. <sighs> this may hurt. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate I your likes adjust. and subscribers. Hit the notification button to get my new videos. Take a look at my channel and check out my Facebook page. The links are in the description. Hang on, Mikey, I am Wrangler. Stay. Bye for now. See you again soon. Interesting facts about famous people.